Chapter 22 The Marriage of Kardama Muni and Devahuti. Maitreya said, After describing the greatness of the emperor's manifold qualities and activities, the sage became silent, and the emperor, feeling modesty, addressed him as follows. Manu replied, To expand himself in Vedic knowledge, Lord Brahma, the personified Veda, from his face created you, the Brahmins, who are full of austerity, knowledge, and mystic power, and are averse to sense gratification. For the protection of the Brahmins, the thousand-legged Supreme Being created us, the Kshatriyas, from his thousand arms. Hence the Brahmins are said to be his heart, and the Kshatriyas his arms. That is why the Brahmins and Kshatriyas protect each other, as well as themselves. And the Lord Himself, who is both the cause and effect, and is yet immutable, protects them through each other. Now I have resolved all my doubts simply by meeting you, for your Lordship has very kindly and clearly explained the duty of a king who desires to protect his subjects. It is my good fortune that I have been able to see you, for you cannot easily be seen by persons who have not subdued the mind or controlled the senses. I am all the more fortunate to have touched with my head the blessed dust of your feet. I have fortunately been instructed by you, and thus great favor has been bestowed upon me. I thank God that I have listened with open ears to your pure words. O oh, great sage, graciously be pleased to listen to the prayer of my humble self, for my mind is troubled by affection for my daughter. My daughter is the sister of Priyavrata and Uttanapad. She is seeking a suitable husband in terms of age, character, and good qualities. The moment she heard from the sage nodded of your noble character, learning, beautiful appearance, youth, and other virtues, she fixed her mind upon you. Therefore, please accept her, O chief of the Brahmins, for I offer her with faith, and she is in every respect fit to be your wife and take charge of your household duties. To deny an offering that has come of itself is not commendable, even for one absolutely free from all attachment, much less one addicted to sensual pleasure. One who rejects an offering that comes of its own accord, but later begs a boon from a miser, thus loses his widespread reputation, and his pride is humbled by the neglectful behavior of others. O oh, wise man, I heard that you were prepared to marry. Please accept her hand, which is being offered to you by me, since you have not taken a vow of perpetual celibacy. The great sage replied, Certainly I have a desire to marry, and your daughter has not yet married or given her word to anyone. Therefore our marriage, according to the Vedic system, can take place. Let your daughter's desire for marriage, which is recognized in the Vedic scriptures, be fulfilled. Who would not accept her hand? She is so beautiful that by her bodily luster alone she excels the beauty of her ornaments. I have heard that Vishvapasu, the great Gandharva, his mind stupefied with infatuation, 
fell from his airplane after seeing your daughter playing with a ball on the roof of the palace, for she was indeed beautiful with her tinkling ankle bells and her eyes moving to and fro. What wise man would not welcome her, the very ornament of womanhood, the beloved daughter of Svayambhuva Manu and sister of Uttanapad? Those who have not worshipped the gracious feet of the goddess of fortune cannot even perceive her, yet she has come of her own accord to seek my hand. Therefore, I shall accept this chaste girl as my wife, on the condition that after she bears semen from my body, I shall accept the life of devotional service, accepted by the most perfect human beings. That process was described by Lord Vishnu. It is free from envy. The highest authority for me is the unlimited Supreme Personality of Godhead, from whom this wonderful creation emanates, and in whom its sustenance and dissolution rest. He is the origin of all prajapatis, the personalities meant to produce living entities in this world. Sri Maitreya said, O great warrior Vidura, the sage Kardama said this much only, and then became silent, thinking of his worshipable Lord Vishnu, who has a lotus on his navel. As he silently smiled, his face captured the mind of Devahuti, who began to meditate upon the great sage. After having unmistakably known the decision of the queen, as well as that of Devahuti, the emperor most gladly gave his daughter to the sage, whose host of virtues was equaled by hers. Empress Shatarupa lovingly gave most valuable presents, suitable for the occasion, such as jewelry, clothes and household articles, in dowry to the bride and bridegroom. Thus relieved of his responsibility by handing over his daughter to a suitable man, Svayambhuva Manu, his mind agitated by feelings of separation, embraced his affectionate daughter with both his arms. The emperor was unable to bear the separation of his daughter. Therefore, tears poured from his eyes again and again, drenching his daughter's head as he cried, My dear mother, my dear daughter. After asking and obtaining the great sage's permission to leave, the monarch mounted his chariot with his wife and started for his capital, followed by his retinue. Along the way he saw the prosperity of the tranquil seers, beautiful hermitages on both the charming banks of the Sarasvati, the river so agreeable to saintly persons. Overjoyed to know of his arrival, his subjects came forth from Brahmarvata to greet their returning lord with songs, prayers, and musical instruments. The city of Varishmati, rich in all kinds of wealth, was so called because Lord Vishnu's hair dropped there from his body when he manifested himself as Lord Bor. As he shook his body, this very hair fell and turned into blades of evergreen kusha grass and kasha, another kind of grass used for mats, by means of which the sages worshipped Lord Vishnu after defeating the demons who had interfered with the performance of their sacrifices. Manu spread a seat of kushas and kashas and worshipped the Lord, the personality of Godhead, by whose grace he had obtained the rule of the terrestrial globe. Having entered the city of Barishmati, in which he had previously lived, Manu entered his palace, which was filled with an atmosphere that eradicated the three miseries of material existence. Emperor Svayambhuva Manu enjoyed life with his wife and subjects and fulfilled his desires without being disturbed by unwanted principles contrary to the process of religion. 
celestial musicians and their wives sang in chorus about the pure reputation of the emperor. And early in the morning, every day, he used to listen to the pastimes of the supreme personality of Godhead with a loving heart. Thus, Svayambhuva Manu was a saintly king. Although absorbed in material happiness, he was not dragged to the lowest grade of life, for he always enjoyed his material happiness in a Krishna-conscious atmosphere. Consequently, although his duration of life gradually came to an end, his long life, consisting of a Manvantara era, was not spent in vain, since he ever engaged in hearing, contemplating, writing down, and chanting the pastimes of the Lord. He passed his time, which lasted 71 cycles of the four ages, or 71 times 4,320,000 years, which equals 306,720,000 years, always thinking of Vasudeva, and always engaged in matters regarding Vasudeva. Thus he transcended the three destinations. Therefore, O Vidura, how can persons completely under the shelter of Lord Krishna in devotional service be put into miseries pertaining to the body, the mind, nature, and other men and living creatures? In reply to questions asked by certain sages, he, Svayambhuva Manu, out of compassion for all living entities, taught the diverse sacred duties of men in general and the different varnas and ashrams. I have spoken to you of the wonderful character of Svayambhuva Manu, the original king, whose reputation is worthy of description. Please hear as I speak of the flourishing of his daughter, Devahuti. Thus ends the 22nd chapter of the third canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Marriage of Kardamamuni and Devahuti.